Before we start our lesson, let us feel the holy presence of God through this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello, Grade 8 learners. Welcome to the school year 2021-2022. I will be your teacher in the English 8 subject. My name is Teacher Gajolin C. Melaton, or you can just simply call me Manga. I hope that you will learn and enjoy learning English with me. Okay, for this module 1, we're going to have the following objectives. First, to appreciate the literature of Africa, especially their folk tales. Identify the parts of the plot. Use graphic organizer, specifically plot diagram, to present the plot of the story. And for our DWSSII goal, through this module, we can promote a deed sense of national identity, appreciation, and preservation of our cultural heritage. Now, let's start learning! So our topic is all about African literature, specifically African folktale and plot diagram. But before we proceed to African folktale and plot diagram, let's try to discover first what is African literature, the history of African literature. So African literature refers to creative literary works of and from Africa. So these statements this statement means that anything in geographical sense, anything that is written or came from Africa, is part of African literature. The next one is that it also refers to literary works written in African language. And the last one, it could be in any language as long as the writer is an African. Now let's try to discover how African literature started. So African literature dates back to ancient Egyptians, especially the hieroglyphs. As what you can see on the left screen, that is an example of hieroglyphs. What is hieroglyphs? Hieroglyphs is a form of writing that uses images instead of letters for a word. This form of writing led to Arabic poetry that is used for religious rites and ceremonials. Earliest form of African literature, specifically in the written form, makes use of hieroglyphics or hieroglyphs. Other African literature are spoken and commonly known as oral literature or orature. Examples of oral literature are proverbs, folk tales, folklore, legends, and myths. This oral literature is used or are used by the elders or seniors of a certain tribe to teach morals and wisdom to the young people or young children. Now let's proceed to our specific type of story, which is a folktale. What is a folktale? So a folktale or folktales are stories in the oral tradition or tales that people tell each other out loud rather than stories in written form. So actually before, 
um, they don't have the written language aside from the hieroglyphics. So technically, they don't write, but they they uh, spread the story the, through the words of mouth. So they use storytelling as a major style of preserving or of sharing the the literature. Okay, they're closely related to many storytelling traditions, including fables, myths, and fairy tales. So every human society or every human group or every tribe has their own uh, folk tales. These folk tales are used to preserve the knowledge, information, and to pass the history and culture from one generation to another. So when you say folk tales, they are old story telling tales okay so they are old tales that are being spoken okay a specific folk tale that we're going to discuss is the tug of war tug of war is a folk tale from a tribe in africa which is the bantu tribe now let's take a look of the title of the folk tale tug of war are you familiar what is tug of war? If not, don't worry. I will show you what is a tug of war. So tug of war makes use of a rope and then there will be two players or two groups at every end of the rope. So this is a contest in which two teams will pull at opposite ends of a rope until one drags the other over a central line. That group who can drag the other over the central line is considered as the winner of the group. This game will test the strength and power of a player or of the members or of a group. So let's find out what is the relation of the tug of war in the story that we're about to read. Hare was angry at both the elephant and the hippopotamus, for they lived on the same island as he did and ordered him about in the most officious way. The trouble with living on a small island was that they could hardly help meeting each other, since there was not a good deal of room. So Hare decided to play a trick on the elephant and the hippo which would make them respect him. So in the beginning of this story or in this part, there is this little hare and he was angry. Why, why was he angry at the two other characters, the elephant and the hippopotamus? The elephant and the hippopotamus mistreats our little character here. Meaning these two big creatures are abusive and they bully the hair so it came to the point wherein the hair got fed up of all this treatment and wanted to stop this kind of treatment or this kind of abuse that he received from these two big animals so hair thought of a trick and this trick would surely make these two respect him let's find out what is this trick? Hmm. First, he went to the center of the island where there were large trees with thick creepers growing up on the trunks and over the branches. Hare spent the whole morning twisting some of these creepers into a strong rope. Then laughing softly to himself, he sought out the elephant. He found him the eastern side of the island, squirting water over his back and trumpeting with pleasure. Good afternoon, elephant, called Hare. Which one does what you say is the stronger? The elephant laughed loudly and squirted Hare with bore, knocking him flat on his back. <laughs> what a 
questions to ask, he said. Of course I'm stronger than you. Shall I prove it by trampling into death? Oh no, exclaimed the hare. But you could prove it by having a tug of war with me. Here is the rope, said the hare. Tie it around your leg while I go to the forest in the middle of the island. But do not pull until I give three sharp tugs. Then do your worst. Okay, so what was the trick that he was planning? To challenge the elephant to play a tug of war. So he was so confident to ask the elephant that he is stronger. And he can only prove it by playing the tug of war. Which the elephant find funny. He find it ridiculous. Because, oh come on, this little creature is weak. So I will be the winner. Do you think the hare was able to convince the elephant? Yes or no? Let's find out. Hare left the elephant tying the rope around his front leg and seizing the other end of the rope, he dashed through the forest and came out on the other hand side of the highland where the hippo lived. So in the, in the end, the hare was able to convince the elephant to play the tug of war. Let's find out what is the next scene. So the next scene is that he left the elephant who was tying the rope around his front leg and he went to the other side of the island where the hippo lived. Let's find out what is the relation of hippo in, the, in this part of the story. Sure enough, the hippo was lying at the edge of the water sunning himself. Good afternoon, hippo, said the hare from a safe distance. Which of us should you say is the stronger? The hippo opened his huge red mouth and yawned, showing his strong white teeth. What a question to ask, he said. Of course I'm stronger than you. I could eat you in one mouthful. Shall I try? Oh no, cried him. But you could prove it by having a tug of war with me. So the other player was not actually the hare, but it was the correct. It was the hippopotamus. But the hippopotamus thought that it was the hare, and the and the elephant thought that it was the hare. But they did not know that they were against someone who is in the same size, in the same power or strength. Let's find out if the hare was really able to convince the hippo to play the game. The hippo said it would be a waste of his energy since it was obvious that he could pull hare into the water in no time at all. Until finally, hare persuaded him to tie the end of the rope around his body and the hippo promised not to begin pulling until hare gave three sharp tugs to the middle of the rope. Okay, so hare was able to convince the hippopotamus. Now, let's find out who do you think will win this tug of war? Is it the elephant or is it the hippo? So now the hare gave three sharp tugs and the game begins. Let, let's find out what happened next or who will be the winner. How the elephant tugged in the load? Well, the hippo groaned and heaved. But as they were so equally matched, neither could move the other far. First of all, the hippo found himself being dragged out of the water a little way up the beach. So he pulled even more frantically until he got back to the water's edge when it was the elephant's turn to be dragged from the sea. So in this part of the story, we could really imagine the shock of the two characters, the elephant and the hippopotamus. They were probably wondering how did hair become this strong? 
that he was able to drag these two beasts from the from where they live but of course these two animals are very stubborn they're very prideful they don't want to lose they don't want to be the weak character so they did their best when the hippo was dragged out of the water he also moved and moved until he can go back to where he was same thing with the elephant when he was dragged he also moved and moved until he could beat the the hare thinking that it was the hare but actually they were competing against someone who is in the same size who is in the same power let's find out so the game begins let's find out who is the winner is it the elephant or is it the hippopotamus i'm very excited let's find out they continued like this for some time making more noise that had never been heard on the island before here who could hear it all was thoroughly enjoying himself so the hare was really enjoying this part of the story in this part of the story because he could see what a fool these two characters are okay so the elephant and the hippo would have gone on their tug of war for days had not the wicked hare seized a knife and slashed through the middle of the rope okay was there a winner in the tug of war yes or no okay there was none why because the hare cut the or slashed the middle of the rope but for sure he was able to make the elephant in the hippo think that he was strong he was actually strong not on the physical sense not on his size but he is strong in the sense that he used his brain his strength is not his uh, physical power but his strength is his mind okay he is very very clever okay what happened next immediately tremendous roars of rage reached his ears and the two loud splashes told the hare that his trick had been a success however he kept out of the way of the elephant and the hippo for a long time afterwards as you can well imagine okay so that is the end of the story so nobody won in the tug of war and the, the trick was a success because the hare was able to make the elephant and the hippopotamus think that he was strong but there was this part here saying afterwards he hid from the elephant and the hippo so what do you think is the reason can you comment down below what is the reason i will give extra points for those who will participate and giving me the reason why the hair hide from the two beasts afterwards hmm. okay so that is the end of the story so your next task is to answer in your blms account the comprehension check through the questions in comprehension check i will know whether you understood the uh, the story that i just read to you so okay answer q1 m1 comprehension check okay. english course so that's it for the part one of our video lesson please do watch the part two of this lesson which is plot diagram